How's it going, guys? I'm Jeff. I'm Alyssa. And welcome back to the Real Life Podcast, where we talk about faith, culture, and answer your questions. Guys, it's been How light years. How fast can you say that? Uh, welcome back to the Real Life Podcast, talk about faith, culture, and answer questions. You kind of like, it kind of sounds like I have <laughs> I like peanut butter up. in my mouth when I try to go really fast. <laughs> um, it has been so long. I know we've missed you guys. I know. Have you missed us? It's okay if you haven't. Be honest. <laughs> um but it's been fun i've actually gotten better feedback on the reruns than i thought we did a lot of reruns which if you're watching on youtube we don't put the reruns on youtube because i feel like that's just then two videos out there but the podcast yeah you guys have loved the reruns that's been really cool Mm -hmm. um okay easy episode for today ranty episode for today and Alyssa has no idea what it is do tell here's the thing guys can i say pissed off too late i said it I, i get a little i'm just i'm pissed off okay specifically Specifically, oh here is my distilled frustration. Are you ready? Here it is. I get very pissed off and I'm very pissed off actively almost every day now when I wake up about how Christians are behaving online. I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Act like a Christian. Act like you love Jesus. Act like grace, mercy, the embodied, resurrected Christ who is the embodiment mm-hmm. of love is in you and it should come out on the keyboard. It should come out on the keyboard, okay? Like, I'm just, I'm so over it. I'm literally about to get more frustrated just talking about this. Um, this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm, guys, we'll get into the details in a second. I'll try to be, you know, provide more vision than just frustration, et cetera. But man. Growing up. Just, yes. Go, yeah, what, growing up, you couldn't say the P word? No, I had to say P-O'd. Okay, guys, I'm P-O'd. <laughs> I'm P-O'd. And same here, like, I, yeah. Okay, um, tell us more. I just feel like now again, I'm not gonna read the tweet or whatever because it actually was a little vulgar, but I'll give you the context. Okay. Um, this wasn't the reason. Like, I'm not ranting about this tweet. I'm actually feel like for the last couple years, Christians have been acting in a way with millions of examples. And but this tweet's just a good distilled example, and it was like two days ago, so it reminded me of this. Um, you can go on my Twitter. It's like I don't know, a couple days ago from whenever this episode, like within the week of when you're listening to this, and I don't tweet much, so it'll be easy to find. And what it was is it was this journalist who got a email from someone and she screen cast. She goes, I, you know, she's like, I rarely do this, but I need to do, I'll, I'll, I don't want to put the cover forth her. She, she made a screen. It was an email. Okay. She got an email and the email was just v- like vulgar disagreement. Just like mm-hmm. you, like just horrendous. Like some of the language it was used in, it was terrible. His, the guy's tone, how he talked about the journalist and the girl, like it was just t- terrible. So then. She goes, I rarely do this, um, but I'm posting this uh, just to let you guys know, you know, this guy's a pastor. And she wow. literally looked at, and what she did is she posted it and you could see the email domain. And then she posted like how he's like the head pastor of a church. And I was just aghast, but I wasn't meaning like, this is the moment we're in. We are in a moment of absolute reckoning. Like what you, it, I'm pulling up the, the other tweets I said, I'm just, I'm pulling them up. I'm pulling them up. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I'm not going to read that one. You can go back to it. But, I, but I, I'm going to read my tweets and this will hopefully give some more context. What do you mean reckoning? Meaning like a reckoning is like a like a, a, a judgment in that moment. Like it's like kind of a reckoning means like time has come. Like it is the house is falling down. God is saying enough. Oh, wait, yeah. um, and like a revealing. Like that's what the true word. You've mm-hmm. heard us say it on the podcast a bunch. That's what the word apocalypse means. Apocalypse means an unveiling, a curtain being pulled back. I think God is completely not, not Satan. I think God is is ordaining an apocalyptic moment where we are seeing the rot, the crap, the poison, and the toxicity at some of the roots of Christendom that are just crushing us. Now, mm. you know, that's I am saying that differently, kind of like how Frederick Douglass did, you know, uh, you know, 100 years ago in regards to one of his, was it the 4th of July speech or whatever, of like, that's different than the actual, like, Christianity of Christ. Like, I'm not saying that, like, you know, I'm talking about two different things. But anyways, let me get into this. Um, okay. So I, I posted this this tweet and then you can go read it. But here's what I said, because this is what my thoughts were. I said, I said, we are a people that have been formed culturally into the image of violence, politics, mm-hmm. power, nationalism, and fear more than mm-hmm. being formed into the image of Jesus. And it's showing right now in this moment. It's yeah. telling and it is, it's telling and right now is sadly the moment and the perfect conditions for this rot to be exposed in us. And I said, this makes me very angry. I said, because here's the thing that's inescapable. It is impossible to hide what image you have been formed into. 
you it will come out when you are squeezed and you are formed into an image. So if you are subtly dedicating your life to worldly power or politics, well, then your biggest fear will be losing it or having it threatened. Mm -hmm. The sad reality of this moment in 2020 with politics and the election and Christianity is that we cannot short circuit and fast track all of the sudden <clears throat> being formed into Jesus's image of grace, mm -hmm. sacrifice, gentleness, and blessing and goodness and love. Meaning like it's, this is like what we're showing right now is just like what we've been formed into. You, we're, fail. Yeah, we're not, there's no way where you can get to this moment and all of a sudden just bleed out Jesus's grace, mercy, peace, love, and goodness if you have not been formed into that the last 20 years. Yeah. And I said, we have to lie in the bed that has been made for us. This moment is just the logical conclusion of the last 30 years in Western evangelical Christendom. Mm. Thoughts? Well... <laughs> <laughs> And again, if you're getting a little, if you're, if you're getting a little anxious about this, if you're like a little, me. if you're a little provoked, <laughs> I'm going to get to very practicals. I want to encourage you. I'm not just saying don't, you know, I'm not conflating to like, don't talk, don't disobey. We're going to get into that. But thoughts. Well, I mean, I think this is a multifaceted conversation, mm. right? I think it has to do with our hearts, our thoughts, what we believe about politics and violence and power and government and how we live in america yeah. and our rights and privileges and um who we serve i think there's a lot of that and then on the that's like the deep layer and then i think on a maybe more surfacey layer which we've talked about before there's this whole idea that um somehow we have gotten into the framework that we um, can act differently online than if we were face to face. Yes. And I think that's really scary because one, the Lord looks at our heart and not the external, right? And so whatever is coming out of us, whether it's online or face to face is what's in our heart. Mm -hmm. And, but it also is true. Like we have never lived in a time like this before. So it's not like we were grew up and took a class about like the ethics of technology. Yeah. But however, I feel like if we are following Jesus, there should be no difference between real life and technology. It should go with us and realizing that online we get to represent the kingdom of God and who he has called us to be as his ambassadors. And it matters what we type. It matters what we say and realizing that there is someone on the other end that it is um, affecting, that it is going towards. It's not like we're robots with no heart. Like the things that we say about people and to people go to another human soul. And so it matters what we say and how we say it. And so I think we need to be called up as believers to represent Jesus Christ well online love other image bearers well online like what you say matters and sticks to people and so we as believers should not be in the category of trolls like that should not like we should not be <laughs> totally. trolls we should we're usually be the worst trolls but yeah. we should be the ones that are showing kindness that are giving people the benefit of the doubt that are speaking truth with love that are praying and asking for revival and showing love like right the two greatest commandments is that we love god with all of our heart soul mind and strength and that we love others and that applies online and somehow i think we have forgotten that like somehow i think we think that it's different and it's not at all and so there's that whole level i'm um, that's just like yeah but like church We're represent representing yeah well online to other human beings well, let's sit in that one for a minute okay. before you go into the second one so um Leia, i wasn't she wasn't i don't know she was gonna be feisty right but it is guys i'm just i'm so sick of it because it's such an it feels like honestly the easiest thing in the world to do that'll help our witness and we're failing at it terribly so i'm just like if we can't get this one right if you can't do basic addition you're not even getting close to kingdom geometry you know what i'm saying so like <laughs> it's just super depressing but um and not to say we haven't failed at it but i i think yeah, it's just like you see something like that is just r like rancid, toxic, horrendous way of acting online. So um, here, here's a couple of things. I want to start getting into practicals or at least this one, the rep the representation. I think sit in that like, you know, uh, uh, one of our mentors, you know, the priors, Jeremy, long time ago, I think, you know, it was, a, it was an off the cuff comment, not related to this, but I'm going to bring it related 
is he said, I forget what it was. It was a long time. Oh yeah. I was talking about like table and our family and our home and dining. Mm -hmm. And he said something like very simple. He's just like, Oh Jeff. He's like, do, uh, you know, uh, do people experience and get a taste of the kingdom of God when they sit at your Mm -hmm. dining room table? You know, and it was just like a question or something in some conversation we had a long time ago. But that question stuck with me of what a provocative question, right? That the people, do people experience the kingdom of God when they sit at our dining room table? Yeah. I think that'll, and you know why that's cool is because that'll transform how your family operates around a table mm-hmm. be by saying like, yes or no. And no, I need to fix things or yes, what a beautiful thing, right? That, 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 that even though that we're not having a serviceman at our table per se, that we kind of have that vision of like our home, right? When a serviceman comes over, I was even thinking of this like, you know, not just friends, of course that one's obvious, et cetera, but even when someone's fixing our AC or whatever, hey, can I get you coffee? Can I get you water? You know, bake them cookies, have the kids write them a little card. Like there's these little things that like, this is a place of peace and love and it bleeds out in the, in the small things, right? Yeah. I think that parallel is true with the internet. The people experience the kingdom of God when they uh, read your typed words. <laughs> the yeah. sad reality is no for most Christians, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And um, you just have to be cognizant of that. You have to be aware of that, that there is a way to conduct yourself as, and here's what it says. You really sit in the king language, the kingdom language, because there's those metaphors, those images really play well here, right? A king, if you are a kingdom citizen and you have a particular king, you are going to act a certain way. That means that king and that kingdom probably has a kingdom charter, meaning you know every government or sovereign nation has a charter, a constitution, a way in which they act. Mm-hmm. You can kind of spot an American when you're walking the streets of Taiwan or Beijing, right? Uh, and certainly can if you talk to them, right? Why? Because there's a level at which you understand there's all these mini micro distinctives of what makes someone right. American right. or vice versa. Um, of a different country yeah exactly and so um and then you get even to the other layer of like we are royal priesthood so we're actually like ambassadors like think about the ambassadors of the united states right like they are on diplomatic missions to other countries and they have to be doubly on their best behavior because they are representing the entire country Mm -hmm. and they take that serious and they represent the head of state and can speak on behalf of them um because they're taking the diplomatic orders like that's the kingdom stuff. That's like, yeah. you, like we are not very good diplomats for Jesus with how we type. Now I'm specifically talking like about like, so let's get into some practicals. Then. Can, I, that, can I just yeah, say one so thing? Say, yeah, I yeah. feel like we're coming real hard and fast at you. I feel like the majority of the people listening yeah. are not those people. Totally. I think you guys do well. I think you represent yes, well. Yes. I feel like you are light bearers. Yeah. And so I think. Yeah, I always feel. Can I just interrupt? Yeah. I feel like it's always annoying to me that the people I want to talk to are usually the people not listening. <laughs> I, so I don't want them to feel like totally. it's not you we're guys. talking about you. you. I feel like let's we're coming together and we're looking at culture as a whole and Christian culture, yeah. Christian culture as a whole. I will say though, for us that show up well, realizing too that right, we live in a broken world and people are broken. And usually when they hurt people, they're speaking from hurt. And so let's say you're the one that is spoken against, written against, that whatever comes at you online to not um, feel so quick to defend yourself, but to show love and kindness in that spot. Or if you see it going online versus other people to like, how can you represent Christ in that? Is there a kind word you can say is, can we be praying for them? Like there's other things that we can do amidst the brokenness of online. Yeah. To distinguish ourselves. Yeah. You know, because the world probably is not going to change in this regard because it's becoming more polarized and um, divided. It is. And so we actually have a really good moment to like, we know that's where culture is going mm-hmm. and is going to continue to go. Mm-hmm. So we have a really good opportunity to let this be a distinctive of our community. Yeah. And right? I think I was just telling my mom the other day, she was like, I just, I feel like we're in such a time right now where the nation is divided against itself. Yeah. And this, which is different. Like when nine 11 happened, we all came together totally. and now all of a sudden it's like, we're so divided against each other. And I keep thinking of that verse that the Lord says, like, they will know that you are mine by how you love each other. And so we as the church need to love and we need to be united and we need to look way different than what the world looks like and what maybe people that say they are Christians that aren't walking the walk look like. Yeah. And so let's get into practicals on that because we'll try to keep this 25, 30 minutes. We're already halfway through. But um, what I would say is let's get into practicals then of, you know, 
uh, a way Alyssa kind of already used the word, but just like we've talked about with technology a lot, how you need to uh, develop a technological manifesto mm-hmm. or ethic for yourself to live as a flourishing image bearer. You have to do the same thing, I think, with social media or like conversation or internet typing or whatever you want to call this conversation we're talking about, debate. You need to have a, an ethic of how you're going to behave online, how you're going to communicate online and like spend some time like with a journal this weekend mm-hmm. or this week, like writing that out. Like like what like what will be your gutters that you are, you know, on the bowling alley? What are going to yeah. be the things that absolutely hold you in? So that the ball does not go in the gutter, right? Like I will always give someone the benefit of the doubt. I don't always have to have the last word. Like write these things down, right? I um I can it's okay to unfollow people. Yes, I will, <laughs> yeah. You know all that stuff. So I think start developing that for yourself. Ask the Lord what he has for you. Um, but then let's even get uh, this is the so but then I will say there's a tiny caveat of this that sometimes frustrates me on both sides, where then sometimes there's another side that is a little bit of the like, well, let's just all get along. Like, you know, don't do it. It's like, no, I like ideas. I am more than anyone. I love, like, I want to debate you. I want to (laughs) argue you. You know what I mean? Like, I want to tell you why I think you're wrong. It's real fun being married sometimes. But (laughs) because I no, I mean, genuinely, I really like ideas and I really like I'm stimulated when people challenge me and, you know, me like it's not just about me winning or whatever it's about like i like just ideas and i love them being sharpened sharpened. and i love talking about them so i'm not saying don't do that but like let's just get really nitty-gritty there's a way to do that so like let's just you know what's an example let's say someone i don't if this feels so like yeah you're almost having to do like a kindergarten level thing and again this probably isn't to you guys but maybe family members or whatever but like you know, but let's, it's good to be reminded. Yes, too. Like, let's say it's someone. Let's say so. Politics is the easy grab. Let's say there's a political thing. Like you know, you know. Let's say there's a discussion on abortion or uh, you know some certain things right now that are hot topics. So do like, would you? Is there? There's choice A and there's choice B of how you would respond to like maybe a friend that posts something you disagree with or posts something with kind of a you know flippant. That that's one easy one by the way by an ethic, flippancy. Being flippant should literally not be in your behavior Mm -hmm. ever as a Christian. Yeah. Ever. You should take everyone seriously. You should honor everyone no matter what they believe. Um, And you should never, ever speak flippantly about the left, about the right, about the conspiracy, anything. That's not how you speak about humans. Do not be flippant. Okay. But like, let's say there's a Facebook post and it's about something that's hot topic that you probably disagree with. Do you think you should jump in there and say... Um, oh my goodness, you're just such a product of the left and man, you're just brainwashed and I just can't believe you're doing that. And are you serious? Have you seen all the people that have died or blah, blah, blah? Like, like any of those, like, are you serious? That's probably something you shouldn't say. Um, you know what I mean? Like you're brainwashed. You probably shouldn't say that. Like, you know, like it's, this is sounds so elementary, but I see it every single day on the internet. Here's a good example of what you should say. You see something like that online. You say, Hey, I spent the last 20 minutes reading this article. That's a red flag. Cause a lot of people don't. (laughs) Um, (laughs) and I appreciate you sharing this. I can tell you really care about this issue. I have a couple questions that maybe you could answer that would help me understand you more. Here's question one. Here's question two. Here's question three. Now that seems like a peaceable representation of Christ, right? And how you type. Now they, maybe they answer those questions and it gives you further understanding and you really disagree with them. Then you could say something like, well, have you considered this source or have you maybe considered these facts? I know it's difficult right now to find absolute truth amidst all this disinformation, but we have to work really hard to do that. Have you considered these things? You gave me something that I haven't considered and I really appreciate that about you. Like, yeah, it's good. don't you think like, so here's the thing. Does it sound mind blowing that we should all type like that? It seems that basic. But no, but I think the thing is one technology has gone grown with us. So we haven't been taught. Nobody's been taught how to act online. We're learning as we go Two, I think. No excuse though. That's no excuse. But <laughs> Jeff is very fiery today. Um, two, I think never before have we been in front of people like you're it's very rare to be in a room with people that you can have those kind of conversations and have a lot of different opinions yeah. i feel like yeah. and so never bef- like online it's really easy to all of a sudden be around people or follow people 
that have very different opinions as you. So then how do you enter into conversation in that way while not being together in person, not seeing you know, tone inflection, yeah. inflection, yeah. facial expressions, like, so All things can be matters. misinterpreted. Yep. So there's, there's a way to learn how to do it. Um, three, I think we too easily assume things and presume things and have our own precepts, presuppositions yes. yeah. of like our own experiences, what, where we come from, what we think. Yeah. And so, and if they said X, they must believe 17 of these other exactly. things. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. so we assume we come to the table, we come to the chat box, we come to the comment section. Chat box. You just take it back to aim. I know. I was trying to like think of whatever it is <laughs> with like so much, I want to say bag, it's not baggage, but just like so much. We use the right word. Presuppositions. Presuppositions that is different from the other person. And so we need to come as our goals should not be to prove our point, to put the other person down, to be right. Our goal should be to understand the other person, to have good sharpening um, conversations. Mm -hmm. And um, like, what else should be our goal? I know there's more. I mean, yeah, to become like Jesus. And become if you like are forming Jesus. yourself in a way that is... Like you're not becoming more and more like Jesus every single day if you're talking in a way that's absolutely shameful to him in the Christian community. Yes. You're just not going to become like him. And you'll be do the opposite. Because like what I said in that those tweets earlier, like there is no such thing as image neutrality. What I mean by that is you literally cannot just remain as is in a spiritual way. It just it's non the scriptures makes the opposite argument. You will be every day, you will be formed more into the image of Jesus are more into a dehumanized, destructive Genesis 3 kind of hollowed out humanness image bearer. That's the three to two options, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And every day you choose aggression, flippancy, um, dehumanization and how you talk about the other person. You're not choosing the way of Jesus and you can just let that go out to its logical conclusion of what that's turning you into then. Yeah. Right? So here's the thing. I think we need to come to the table wanting to understand the other person. So that means you ask a lot of questions. You ask clarifying questions. What I think I, I hear you saying is this. Um, oh, that's the best question. Yes. Yeah. That's a, that I use. That, I even told Lisa like last week. I use that question so much in real life. Of what I think I'm hearing you say is, and people actually love, like that's such a good question because then people just say like, oh no, I didn't mean that. Yeah. So it takes away all misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Or like yes, and you go okay, well then I accurately understand you, so now I can speak into it, and you won't feel like I'm straw manning you. Right. Totally. And so I think it really, as we're talking about it, I think heard. online it's just really difficult because you're not together in person. Because even in person, if you have these difficult conversations with someone that you highly disagree with, you are in person together. You know it's a soul and a soul. And there's going to be some level of honor and respect there, hopefully, that just can't happen online because it's just these words typed out on a screen. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to even come even more so like wanting to honor them, wanting to understand because we don't have the interaction of one-on-one -on -one in person. Yeah. And I would say, I would agree and disagree. And what I mean by that is like, I don't think it's hard to talk online. I think for most of it, <laughs> for most of it, I think yeah. we're just all really bad at it. Now there is some exceptions, meaning like if there's a serious hard conversation that Alyssa's talking about, like ones that are deeply aggressive, like deeply tough on a certain relationship, then then yeah, there is ones that are like that. That is very difficult to do online. You should take that in person or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or I think sometimes we have to say there's exemptions sometimes of like, um, you know, like race is a good example. Like if you're if you're on the if you're on a conversation with someone that is kind of and their kind of flippancy is mm -hmm. dehumanizing your race and kind of your identity, then that's not super. I don't think you just need to be like. <clears throat> um, you know, just respond all nice and like, you know, no, like, I'm not saying that. No, I know. I'm saying okay. that would be in the harder conversation. Like yeah. that, 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 like it's just not, that's not the space for it. Type yeah. Of thing. You right. know, maybe, maybe log off. You don't need to do that, whatever. But just the basic stuff, like there's a, there's like eight out of 10 conversations that are just surface level of like gun rights and, you know, and um, just like kind of more like where the conversations are fairly in the clouds philosophically, but yet we still just get absurd about them. Even mm -hmm. theological mm -hmm. points. I'm just like, why are we not just talking like humans? You know, um, I don't think that's that hard, you know, mm -hmm. but I, but I, you know, so I think there's like two lanes. Yeah. I just, we just got to do better. I literally can't. I, I'm just like every day I get on the internet. I'm just like, do better. Like do better. I don't, I don't understand. I, I want to understand it, but I'm like, but it's what I said in the tweet too. Like I get really depressed because I'm like, man, we wouldn't be acting like this. There wouldn't be this reckoning right now in Christian culture 
of how certain leaders are talking, how they react, their flippancy, their rude rudeness. Like you should never, ever be rude. You should never be unkind. You should never be flippant. Um, you should never be super aggressive. Um, you should always seek to understand. And again, none of that negates the fact, go ahead and debate. Like I want to argue these ideas with you and I want to tell you why I think you're wrong. That's totally okay, right? No, I'm serious because I think what people say it can be both. But like there's a way to say, oh, can no, you help me here? Or, Let me see that. Or what have you read there? I want Let's to go. show you that you're wrong. Well, why Why else do you jump into a debate? <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, oh, man, babe. But no, like, do you know what I'm saying? Like there's just, like, there's just a way to talk. And here's the thing that I'm thinking too. I think often we come to the, people come to the conversation with that attitude because that's how we're talking about it. Yes. In our own homes. And, okay, okay. Say but, it again. And, but that's also a conviction to me because I need to do better in my home. When I'm talking to my husband, when I'm talking to my parents about politics and things I really believe, it's a safe place, yes. Yeah. But also like, man, I could definitely grow at honoring more or just not being so baffled yeah. at, like, at understanding them more or like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not saying that truth is relative. No, totally. Definitely we can be passionate. We can believe things. Yeah. Um, and I think there are some things you can say at home true. that you can't say on it's the internet. True. But, but there's a huge... But, the, but the, there the, is the, the some consistent, things. The consistent element is humanization. Yes. That's all you're saying. Yes. You're not saying that I can't be stronger or that I can't maybe be more honest at home, which you should be able you're to right. be. And I could be baffled. But yes, you can be baffled. <laughs> I'm baffled a lot. I'm baffled at how Christians <laughs> are talking online. Um, but, but you should humanize. Right? Yes, humanize. that's the thing. And even like, honestly, guys, this would be a self-check for me of like, I... This is what I've even worked on is the places where I'm getting exhausted at. I have to remember whew, these are humans. These are, you know, like, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a layer there too of prophetic nature. Like there's some stuff in the scripture where we're like, man, if Jeremiah would say that today, would we call him too abrasive or aggressive, but it's scripture. Um, th but that's, I feel like that's like phase five or layer five of like, we can get to geometry, but first let's talk about addition. Um, but yeah, you know, mm -hmm. final thoughts. Okay. We've talked a lot. And we might disagree just a little bit. So give us you think like we disagree? your What do you think we disagree on? Well, I don't think we actually disagree at all, but perhaps what we're saying is a little different. Yeah, which I think is complementary to each other. I think you right. said what well, I good. wasn't saying and yeah. Final See, thoughts? I could be more bold and like, uh, what do you call that? Confident in my opinions. Mm. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what you're it saying either. Out. Okay, I don't know what you're saying. I wasn't okay. catching the wind. Here's okay, what I'll say. Mind. Okay, here's what I'd say, guys, to close. Maybe a fun exercise this week would could be the journaling thing I said with your own ethic. Or two, if you're the person who likes to jump in these conversations or whatever, every time you do it, screen capture it from a Sunday to a Sunday. So do it for a week, kind of like screen capture. Don't even look at it then. Just screen capture. Just remember, screen capture conversation, go back to the river. The following Sunday after you've done that for a week, go back and audit yourself. Go back on Sunday and say, man, now that I'm reading that, would I, would I, because it really doesn't matter how you say it. It matters how it comes across. That's the truth. I think also Christian people get a lot, you know, and it's like that, like what matters is how it was received. Did people mm. feel loved by how they read that? Yeah. Did yeah. they feel understood? Did they feel heard? Um, and I've noticed, and here's the, here's the thing guys too. I've seen this. Uh, and the reason I get so upset is I've seen the power of this go the right way. Mm -hmm. I've seen, I've seen, because I, people do it to us a lot because we're public figures, you know, C minus level Christian celebrities, whatever you want to call that. So it's not like public figure, but you know, I don't know, minor league figure. I don't know. But we, we, we have a big enough platform where people do comment enough to us thinking that we're not real. Yeah. And I try super hard and I've done this like hundreds of times of just kind of like, I don't, I, I genuinely have probably made a comment of this nature, like hundred times where something like that, it could be about anything. I say, instead of jumping back, lashing out, I'll say something like, you know what? Uh, <clears throat> that really hurt. Um, but I appreciate you sharing that feedback. I wish you maybe could have shared that a little kinder or a little X or whatever. Like I try to really humanize the interaction and really share that that hurt me. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but I appreciate you kind of try, you know, for sharing or whatever. And there's been a hundred times at least over the last couple of years where the next comment from that person is, Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, or, um, Oh my, I like it like it kind of like it almost is like we're we're walking and typing like zombies mm -hmm. and there's something about just like a, a non-defensive spirit yeah and humanization that wakes people up mm -hmm. and we as people of Jesus and the reason you know of course there's sometimes where I want to lash out and I have and I haven't been perfect but I always tell myself like we are the people of like the Christian people are people 
defined by like not defending themselves. Like we mm-hmm. literally worship and bow our lives and knees to a person who didn't defend himself. Yeah. It's like, we don't need to, and we have such a secure identity. We don't need to defend ourselves. Who cares what you say, right? The king in heaven says who I am. Like, you know, like I have, and it's like, it's done. There's nothing that like you can do. Like it's done. Everything's the the cross, the resurrection, my identity, my, the future glory coming. Like you can say nothing that'll affect any of that. So like, I don't care. Right now. I don't care. Like in the sense, I don't want to hear you, but I mean, like it doesn't affect the core. Right. So like, we 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 don't need to defend ourselves. And I think it was A.W. Tozer who said that a long time ago where he said, you know, based on Christian theology and the cross and resurrection, you only have two options as a Christian when someone critiques you or lashes out at you. And it's one, they're right, so you correct yourself. Mm-hmm. Or two, they're wrong, it doesn't matter, your identity is in Jesus. Just, there's no third option of like, so lash back. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. There's no option. It's like one or the two. They're wrong. Correct yourself because it doesn't, you know, you don't need to even like bear any of the shame or anything like that because it's like, again, Jesus, it's free grace. Just boom. They were, Jesus used them as a vessel to speak to you even in their anger and frustration, just like he spoke through a donkey in the Old Testament. Take it, receive it, change, move on. Or uh, just be like, eh, you're wrong and, uh, you know, and that, and I'm anchored in Jesus. You know? Mm-hmm. Final thoughts. All right, guys, we love you. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any final thoughts? No, I just, I think that's the goal, right? That's yeah. the hope that we become that. Yep. To have thick skin, soft hearts, and let's not lose our soft hearts as we walk through and develop our thick skin. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Here's another thing, guys, too, that I've been thinking about a lot. Like, you know, we are sheeps, not wolves. Yeah. Like, so so act like it. With a good shepherd. Yeah, just act like it. Like a sheep is an enormously dumb, vulnerable, <laughs> um, non-predatory, yeah. aggressive animal. Like, act like it. Just act like a sheep, right? And and it probably will generally get you in the right area of how you behave online, <laughs> you know? Of just, like, you're present, you're there. And like Alyssa said, you know, wolves don't have, like, caretakers. Yeah. And so that's what it really is. Yeah. If you think about it, guys, that's the difference. A wolf has to be aggressive because they don't eat if they're not, right? Mm-hmm. Now, of course, a shepherd's not, like, feeding the shepherd sheep, you know? But a wolf, t- I mean, a shepherd takes care of the sheep. Mm-hmm. So they can kind of be that docile, for lack of a better word, or humble or whatever you want to call it, because they know they have a caretaker, Yeah. right? A wolf has to kind of get his own. And I think a lot of the way we type online and a lot of the way we act online is showing ourselves to be wolves because we are tight fisting and clenching mm-hmm. everything because we think we have to do it and Jesus isn't actually there. Yeah. Or we say he is, but he's not helping us, right? And so that really is revealing, I think. Mm-hmm. But man, this episode is crazy. I'm very excited to hear your guys' thoughts. <laughs> and honestly, based on how angry I am next week, we might just re-record the exact same thing and, oh, do, a, and do a part two. <laughs> until the country, place, until the country gets it. Exactly. Yeah. All that to say, reiterate, we love you guys. And I will sp- seriously say the community we have crafted on Instagram and in our podcast and on YouTube videos is the antithesis to this. And I am so mm-hmm, thankful. Like mm-hmm. so many of you give, are the place that actually give me hope that the internet is not just yeah. everything we say. But man, uh, let's remind ourselves. Let's be this. Let's act like that. And just be ambassadors of Jesus and diplomats mm-hmm, of Jesus. So mm-hmm. we love you guys. Have a great week.